here, northern British Columbia, the Highway of Tears. Located between Prince Rupert and Prince George, Highway 16 in British Columbia is also known as the Highway of Tears. Countless Indigenous women and girls have either gone missing or have been found murdered with a common deadly link to the Highway of Tears. It was here that the bodies of Alberta Williams and Ramona Wilson were found murdered years apart. Ramona Wilson and Alberta Williams were living happy lives surrounded by family and friends. Their murders devastated both families, and in each case, the crime remains unsolved. The Highway of Tears is made up of never-ending corridors of logging roads, ravines, and rivers, and can be a haven for concealing criminal activity. But these crimes of opportunity are about more than location. They reveal dark underlying truths about society. At any time during this broadcast or afterward, if you have any information that might help solve the case of the murder of Alberta Williams or Ramona Wilson, visit our website. Someone out there has answers. Our goal is to find them. Alberta Williams was 24 years old when she was murdered. Her body discarded and found near the Highway of Tears on September 25th, 1989. Alberta Williams and her family hail from Gitsan First Nation near Hazleton, British Columbia. It's at the most northern section of Highway 16, less than 300 kilometers from Prince Rupert. Alberta's sister, Claudia Williams, recalls life at home as close-knit and carefree. Alberta, you know, just like my other sisters, they, they were, I think we we're all brought up to be very happy. I don't think there was any one of us that was sad, just happy, just kind of welcome things as they come. You know, so I like to help people a lot, and socializer. I would say that my sister was more of a socializer than I was. In the summer of 1989, when Alberta was 24 years old, she and Claudia lived with family in Prince Rupert while working at a local cannery. Working seasonally was common for local residents. Prince Rupert's not that big. We pretty well know a lot of the people that go to the canneries to work. A lot of them are probably from the reserves all along the Skeena there. Some of them from the NAS. You know, a lot of them out to do the same thing we are. We weren't strangers there. At summer's end, Alberta and Claudia went with friends to a local bar to celebrate and say their goodbyes for the season. When the pub closed, Alberta begged Claudia to go with her to another party. So I went along with everybody up the stairs. There was a group standing right in front of the pub. Alberta was there, I was there. She's again still trying to convince me. Claudia, come with me. And then to my right, the guy that I was going out with at the time distracted me. Then I turned around. Oh my God, Alberta was gone. So was everybody. I could not believe it. I'm like, how could people disappear so fast? Not only that table that she was sitting with, but I'm talking everybody within that time. At first, Alberta's family believed she would be home soon. But when two days passed with no contact, the family knew something wasn't right. It was the second day, late the second day, that, you know, ended up phoning the police. Look, she's not home. But there was no contact, nothing. The family couldn't wait for police to organize a search and began looking on their own. There was me, my brothers, sisters, and all that. We were searching through the brushes. I don't know. I mean, Dad asked us to do this to us. We're like, God, Dad, you know? Why are we looking in the bushes? But you could see his face. He was so hurt. On September 25th, 1989, Alberta Williams' body was found 37 kilometers east of Prince Rupert near the Taiyi Overpass. Her death was ruled a homicide. There have been no arrests. I don't even know why anybody would even look at her and to think to hurt her. Plus, you know, she's so kind, she wouldn't even hurt anybody. If anything, she'd be the one trying to help you. 
Project Ipana was formed in 2005 as a result of major unsolved crimes linked to the Highway of Tears. They have specifically targeted 18 cases that are currently active. That number is conservative. Many remote communities have lost people, and unofficial estimates are considerably higher. She was a young girl in Prince Rupert, and she was out with her friends and, and family the night that, um, that she went missing. And um, she was found uh, sometime later, um, you know, on the highway between um, uh, Prince Rupert and Terrace. And, you know, off into a, uh, there was a, a, a rail tie yard. And, um, you know, we've looked at all kinds of people. I think we've identified everybody that's worked at the, at the you know, with the, the rail uh, company and, um, like, nothing. Alberta was added to the ePANA list of active investigations, but Claudia has taken matters into her own hands, enlisting the expertise of private investigator Ray McCalco. I'm a licensed private investigator in British Columbia and got involved investigating the cases on the Highway of Tears about uh, nine years ago. I was following the story and, and decided that I would get personally involved and try to see if I could come up with some information which I may be able to then pass along to the police. It's frustrating because my goal is to, to solve one of these cases, and I think that close doesn't count in this kind of a thing. So I'm, I'm sure the police are close as well. They just don't do a very good job of explaining to the families what, if anything, they've done. The hardest time I have is dealing with the families, and. Um, um, like every meeting is emotional uh, for them. Um, I want to tell them that I just haven't done a bunch of work and come up with nothing. I want to tell them that we've solved it. When you lose a sister like that, especially when we're so close that night and I lost her in a blink, literally in a blink of an eye, it feels like I walk under a cloud. You know, my sister is uh, gone. And you know, because I was with her that night, I carry so much guilt because, you know, I could have went with her, but I didn't. Alberta Williams was a 24-year-old woman who was viciously murdered and discarded by the Highway of Tears and found on September 25th, 1989. Who did Alberta meet up with that night after the bar on August 15th, 1989? Was it someone she knew or a stranger? If you have any information or to find out more about Alberta Williams or Ramona Wilson, go to our website. On June 11, 1994, Ramona Wilson left home to visit friends in nearby Morristown, BC. In April of 1995, Ramona's remains were found near Highway 16. Who made sure Ramona didn't arrive at her friend's house and that she would never see her family again? The night Ramona disappeared, she made plans to go to her friend's house that evening in Morristown, 25 minutes west of Smithers on Highway 16. It's not known how she intended to get there. All is known is that she didn't arrive. Her mother, Matilda Wilson, recalls the day. Uh, she was going to her friend her best friend's place, uh, and uh, they were going to a dance. And I didn't know that she was never gonna come home that night. Ramona's sister Brenda remembers the agony of her disappearance. Yeah, it was just devastating to, to know something terrible had happened to her. And, you know, we knew something terrible happened to her because she would have called home. Ramona was her family's pride and joy from the day she was born. She was born on February 15th, 1978. And uh, she, was, she was only six pounds. <laughs> uh, she had really curly hair and, and uh, uh, she had beautiful eyes, brown eyes. Ramona was the youngest of six and was adored by her siblings. I was so happy that there was another girl in the family. She just, you know, really brought a lot of joy to our family and all my brothers, you know, just cherished her. They would be very protective of her and, you know, keep tabs on where she was and 
where she was going and because I waited all those years. <laughs> Ramona enjoyed sports and expressed herself through poetry. Many of her poems dealt with issues she and her friends faced growing up in a remote community. As I look out to the bright blue sky this chilly autumn day, there is no way I can thank the Creator, no way to repay, for the lovely sights to heart's content that He has let me see, for joys and laughter that I've lived and the love that He gave me. She did quite a few poems that we collected in a photo album. You know, she really talked about the Creator and, and you know, how she wished that things could be better for people's lives, that they could, you know, really live the lives that they wanted to live without fear, without pain, you know, without violence. Finally, in April 1995, Ramona was found nearly a year after her disappearance. There's a couple of people that were four by fouring. And, and, uh, and they had got stuck in the mud when they ran across uh, Ramona's remains. And that was April 10th, uh, 1995. Her body was found in a wooded area off Yellick Road near the Smithers Airport. Her clothes were also found, neatly placed nearby, as was a partially buried length of rope and several plastic zip ties linked together. 22 years after Ramona was taken, law enforcement still has no answers. The Ramona Wilson case continues to be a, a very active case. Um, uh, she's a young girl at the time that uh, she went missing. Uh, you know, like all of them, they're all, they're all still very solvable. Um, we haven't got any closer, unfortunately. But, you know, what we have done is we've eliminated many, many, many people. And, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a shallow victory, but, it, but it's something. Chief Terry TG of the Carrier 2nd E Travel Council knows too well the challenges faced by people in his area. I represent uh, seven, eight uh, communities in the CSTC uh, territories and uh, our exact uh, territory is about 72,000 square kilometers, which is basically the size of Ireland. One of the obstacles that Indigenous people living in this remote area face is the lack of safe, affordable transportation. What's difficult for a lot of our community members is that uh, in the end, how are you going to get to a, an urban centre? How are you going to get to point A to point B if you have an appointment or you have to go back to school? Uh, so, so a lot of our membership or a lot of uh, people along the highway just decide to, to make that choice and, and uh, hitchhike. And uh, it's a crime of opportunity. Many of the cases uh, are a lot of these women, of which were a lot of First Nations, were victimized. Matilda continues to honor Ramona's memory, despite the years that have passed. She loved people, and she loved her culture, and she always tried to be kind to everyone. And, and I hope someday that, that, that they will find, they, they will solve her murder. Ramona Wilson was living an exciting life as a teenager, but that life was cut short. What happened to Ramona Wilson? And is the only link between her case and Alberta Williams that they were both taken from the Highway of Tears? If you have information on either case, go to our website. Alberta Williams was 24 years old when she was murdered. Her body found near the Taiyi overpass on September 25, 1989. Her killer has not been found. Ramona Wilson was just 16, excited to spend the weekend with friends in nearby Morristown. But she was taken before she could get there safely. It would be almost a year before her body was found near Yellick Road in April 1995. How do these murders linked to the Highway of Tears continue to go unsolved? How can these acts of violence in this location be explained?
Craig Benjamin and Amnesty International Canada are working closely with First Nation communities affected by these crimes. We've spent a, a lot of time in Northern British Columbia. We have been uh, working to draw attention both to individual stories, but also to the, to the larger patterns of violence. When a woman goes missing, uh, when there's suspicion uh, that, that she may have been victim of foul play, that there, there's a full, a uh, thorough police investigation, that the families are kept informed, that the families see justice. There is evidence to suggest that cases of missing and murdered along Highway 16 are part of a much larger pattern of violence against Indigenous women and girls in Canada. There is a systemic problem here. Uh, the, the very fact that we are looking at rates of violence uh, seven, eight times higher than that experienced by all other women and girls in, in Canada, that this violence does not come just from a single source, but is pervasive. This is violence that occurs in the home, but it also occurs in the streets. The very fact that this violence could go on year after year tells us that there's something fundamentally wrong here. Chief Terry Tiji is all too familiar with the many challenges of living in a remote northern territory. The people of the carrier Sakani region are isolated, and Highway 16, the Highway of Tears, is frequently the road most traveled. Well, logistically, for, for anybody who's in our territory or, or in one of our communities, it's, it's very difficult uh, for economic development and for uh, having a, a steady job or uh, getting adequate education. So, so a lot of our people uh, don't have a reliable uh, transit system, don't have a, a vehicle. So what do you do? You, you hitchhike, and it's the, the easiest and cheapest way to travel. What's frustrating is that uh, how our women are treated as individuals and how they're seen and what we need is a fundamental change in the society of how not only Aboriginal women are seen, but how First Nations in this country are seen. For Alberta Williams' family, the passing of time has not erased the memory of her disappearance. Her sister Claudia is still angry at how suddenly and tragically the events of that night unfolded. Alberta was categorized as missing and murdered women. She was not a missing and murdered woman. She was my sister. She was our sister. She didn't go out on that highway. She didn't hitchhike. And it's not even her character. I pray for some of the families out there that are still searching. They're searching. I can't imagine what that's like. Every year since 1995, Ramona Wilson's family organizes a commemorative walk in Smithers, BC. They celebrate Ramona's life and remind the world whoever did this is still out there. What we've done all through the years was, was to let people know that, that we're gonna be uh, standing there every June to let people know not to forget the loved ones that, that have been murdered or not found. We try to involve everybody so that, you know, there's collaboration of people, you know, bringing them together so that they don't forget about, you know, Ramona's case and that there's still no answers and that there's more and more women going missing. And it, I think it's a really good way to bring that awareness. When I was going through this for 10 months, um, I'm just imagining what these parents are going through. They, they haven't found their loved ones. It is so hard, it's so difficult. I pray for them every day. Even though I, uh, my, my daughter's murder hasn't been solved, but uh, that's the hardest, the most difficult to go through is, is when you haven't found them yet. But we're strong. Uh, we, we shall always walk. We shall always walk. We will be walking for them every year. Yes. For Chief Terry TG, the Highway of Tears is both symbolic and personal. Matilda Wilson is TG's aunt, and Ramona was his cousin. He has never come to grips with her murder. You know, finding Ramona's remains really impacted uh, the, the family. Um, 
when I see my aunt, she's she's changed. It this these crimes change people, and uh, I couldn't imagine how she felt. You know, I have a 11 year old daughter now, and I, and I couldn't imagine losing my daughter in such a horrific way. And uh, and I think that's what drives me. That's what drives a lot of the families up in the Highway of Tears or Picton Farm or Loretta Saunders or, or Tina F Fontaine, is that that's, that's what drives you to say that, you know, we don't want this to happen to another family. And For more information about Alberta Williams and Ramona Wilson, visit our website, 